Welcome. I'm Russell Alexander. I've been practicing family law with the team at Russell Alexander Collaborative Family Lawyers for over 20 years. We serve clients during separation, divorce, and other family related matters. We upload a new video twice per week to cover interesting topics and provide up-to-date information during the pandemic. Today, we're going to discuss the Supreme Court of Canada's opines on hardship as it applies to child support obligations. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted separated and divorced parents in many ways, but from an important economic only standpoint, it has prompted the job losses, reduced value in investments and nest eggs, an overall increase in financial struggle and uncertainty. For those parents who are obliged to pay child support, these economic factors may serve to exasperate existing challenges they already have. In terms of meeting the obligation to pay child support on a regular basis. The recent decision by the Supreme Court of Canada and Michael and Gryden touches upon the issue directly by addressing how support paying parents hardship might factor into a court's decision on whether to still hold that parent responsible for historical debt in the form of unpaid past child support. This decision is lengthy and covers a lot of ground. Our previous blog and videos have covered some of the more technical elements of the ruling as applied to the facts. And the more recent November blog and YouTube video highlights the concurring opinion by the Honorable Justice Martin, which covers the historical basis for support legislation, the impact on access to justice, and what the judge called the feminization of poverty. As we have noted in our prior commentary, the majority judgment, was, which was concurred in by three of the Supreme Court judges, clarified the BC law as it applies to retroactive child support by examining the governing law in that province, namely Section 152 of the Family Law Act, requiring that in applications to vary support retroactively, the child who benefits must be a, quote, child under the age of majority at the time the variation application is made. The Supreme Court ultimately ruled that it was eminently clear under BC legislation that one, children who are dependent on their parents are eligible to receive child support. And two, the family courts in that province are authorized to change, suspend, or terminate an order respecting child support and to do so either prospectively or retrospectively. This is true regardless of whether the original child support order expired. Indeed, as the majority of the court ruled, far from erecting barriers, Section 152 creates an avenue for courts to retroactively change any child support order irrespective of the beneficiary's dependent status and irrespective of whether the order is extant at the time of application. If you're enjoying this video and find it helpful, you can give it a thumbs up or leave a comment for us below in the comment box. Back to the case, it was also noteworthy about the decision is the Supreme Court's elaboration of some of the principles set out in its own prior ruling in 2006 in a case called DBS. That earlier judgment included a list of factors a family court had to take into account in determining whether to order a parent to pay historical child support debt. These include the reasons for the paying parent's delay, the circumstances of the child, and the hardship the award creates for the paying parent. On that last factor, the Supreme Court in Mikhail had some important additional observations to make that are worth repeating at length here. Hardship award might entail this factor if it takes into account the ease with which the payer 
might be able to pay the award. If the award would cause the payer undue hardship, and if the other factors do not mitigate against it, this factor may weigh against an award or affect its temporal scope to achieve a fair result. It is necessary that there be no hardship caused by the award for it to be granted. If there is potential for hardship on the payer's part, but there is only blameworthy conduct which precipitated or ex exasperated the delay, it may be open to the court to disagree with the presence of undue hardship. In all cases, hardship may be addressed by the form of payment. While the focus on the hardship to the payer, that hardship can only be assessed after taking into account the hardship which would be caused to the child and the recipient parent from not ordering the payment of the sums owing but unpaid. In DBS, the majority recognized that courts should recognize that hardship considerations in this context are not limited to the payer parent. While they are referred to the impact of other children, it is clear that hardship cannot be measured in the abstract, but must be grounded on the facts and the totality of the circumstances. For example, the payer may be able to establish that the paying past due child support in the amount of $20,000 would create hardship because the pair does not have the funds on hand and would be required to obtain a loan or sell property to discharge that child support debt. However, it must be taken into account that the pair had the benefit of the unpaid child support for the full time in which it was unpaid, and such monies may have funded the preferred lifestyle and purchase a property which may now be sold. If the children have gone without the appropriate level of support, it often means that the recipient parents have been forced to go into debt themselves or spend all their monies not on property but but on the child. It may also mean that custodial parents foregone opportunities like spending time with the child or pursuing higher education and enhancing their career prospects because they had to work an additional job or two to provide for the child. The recipient parent may therefore have incurred debt to cover the cost of the child's essentials or have no savings because all monies were absorbed by monthly outlays. Viewing matters in this holistic way places hardship to the payer in its actual factual and legal matrix. While it may appear to be difficult to ask a payer to obtain a loan for $20,000 to repay the debt of unpaid child support, the recipient may be in debt in a similar amount. Thus, the hardship caused to the child and the recipient parent from the non-payment is also a crucial part of the equation. With historical awards, there may be a longer period of unpaid child support, resulting in larger amounts and greater hardship on all sides, all of which increases the need to see the full picture and assess hardship based on all the circumstances. In the end, even the case focuses technically on BC legislation, the importance of the Supreme Court of Canada's decision in Michael resonates across the rest of Canada as well, in numerous respects. Please leave your thoughts and questions in the comment box below. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up to let us know. You can subscribe to our channel by hitting the bell icon and get notification every time we upload a new video. Thank you for watching.